and Patreon subscribers. So uh, we'll start with gold because it gets requested and I'm quite happy to do requests. If you want us to look at anything in particular, we can definitely do that. So gold has been requested. So we can look at this and uh, we are a buy at the big picture. I've got to remember and the profitable traders are long and they have been long for a long time uh, for probably two, nearly two and a half weeks, nearly three weeks even. They've held long and so that's what we want to try and do is keep on the right side and these guys are profitable traders right so uh, these are the small minority of retail traders who who do make money you know consistently and they are long so we've got to uh, pay attention to that we had a um, bullish candle here <laughs> it was a huge bullish candle now if you might remember I was saying about the US yields and uh, we they collapsed in succession from the 30 year the 20 the 10 the 5 the 2 the 1 and then the three month they all collapsed in succession and the first one to fall was the 30 year and that coincided with the low on gold so um them falling it did gave a, a gold a big fundamental boost and so it really did rally now if you zoom out to the h4 the daily it's quite strong technically so it could be that they're looking for dips you know uh and just it just so happened that the yields collapsed as well um so the one below 1910 and uh, obviously this is the bullish candle so be careful you wouldn't want to sell it unless we breach 198 well I suppose there really 1917 as a stop down there so potentially you could short down there if you're looking for a sell but i wouldn't want to be selling in this bullish volume Big, uh, big candle, and you can see it superseded the candles prior. It's very strong. Okay, so that's how you can use this better volumes. It's a free indicator from FX SSI. Definitely get it. It's amazing, and you can see how you can map to the corresponding price action. So be wary about shorting gold while we're in this range. Okay, in this big spike, and there's a fundamental boost to it as well from the U.S. yields. Uh, so possible. Uh, that's quite horrendous, but it's possible. So be careful. <laughs> and uh, so 1970, right? And so that's gold covered. Um, UJ, uh, daily open. So, you know, below the daily open, we can target the SLC, 129.67. Okay, try and keep it nice and simple. If we're above the daily open, then yeah, we can target the SLC above. But, um, you know, that's where we started on the day. So... We could potentially have like a retracement and we're going to retest the daily open, but we'll just we'll simply go for that because that's what we know. Uh, there's your weekly open there. So we're currently above the WO, but below the DO. So slightly mixed. So potentially on a small intraday basis, because we're below the daily open, look for an uh, SLC probe and then potentially even maybe look for a buy because we're above the weekly open. <laughs> So it might be a liquidity probe. That's what it might be. The size is larger of the two as well. So it might just want to do that. And then assuming that we remain above the weekly open, then yeah, now that could be a somewhat bullish that we, you know, we close above that for the week. And uh, there's your monthly pivot there. So from a technical perspective, from a big time frame, you know, we should be selling to support which is down there, okay? Uh, so that's UJ. I think that's going to be likely and that'd be horrendous. <laughs> and, you know, we'll do that scenario. Uh, let's look at their dollars and um, try and make it a quick video today, I think. It's uh, not as aggressive, the selling. One above um, is at 92.80 and 91.90. Daily open uh, here. So... If we remain above, then we can potentially target the SLC. If it was me, I would wait for a bullish candle first because, you know, we can have perhaps another succession of bearish candles and you don't really want to be fighting it as it's falling. Wait for it to look bullish, at least on the hourly, in order to target the SLC. And there's your ATR long for the week as well. So that could be a decent target, but you'd want to wait for some bullish you know, signs before you bought, if you wanted to buy, but you'd have to be careful because we're a sell at the big picture here with 68% long. So really sentimentally, we can fall. Technically, because we're above the daily open, we might just be okay. Uh, below that, then yeah, we'll target the SLC. So you could look for a short 
92.23 and target that. It's like a fairly free pip profit, which isn't fantastic, but as long as you know where your exit is, it's fairly strong on the hourly. You know, you can see we're making higher lows and a higher high. So, uh, yeah, interesting. So maybe, maybe up here, potentially, it's hard to say, but we really shouldn't because these guys get paid. So a bit of a gamble, Dollar Swiss. Uh, dollar CAD. We've got the CAD data out later. It's high severity, monetary report. So no doubt the CAD's going to move quite a bit. And uh, we've got a little bit of um, headwind for this particular pair because of CAD and its oil, um, you know, its fundamental correlation to oil. And uh, if the oil appreciates in its price, the Canadian dollar appreciates as well because it's a huge export of oil. And so obviously it impacts their economy. Um, so, so that's a very uh, strong correlation. So you do note that if you're trading this particular pair, look at the price of oil. Uh, the one below is large at one free. Um, one three three thirty, one yeah, <laughs> God, and so that's where you can target one three three twenty nine ish. Uh, weekly opens there, daily opens here. So we're sort of almost like sideways. We are just going sideways, aren't we? They've gone long, so that explains this move above the support. It might be okay for a lift, but we have to remember, you know, we've got the strong fundamentals for CAD. So it's putting pressure on this particular currency pair. So probably down to the SLC, I think. Let's look at EU, and then we'll look at GU and AU. And then um, I'll uh, be doing some panning and scanning on the markets. 109.25, one below is at 108.29. Monthly resistance one, 108.26. Weekly open here, daily open here. So um, we're above both. So technically, you know, it's okay. Sentimentally, we're a buy. They are going slightly long, but it isn't like a great deal. So really, we can probably come up to the SLC, 109.25. Um, so yeah, potentially it's a 45 pip um, move. It might just want to grab that liquidity, some stops up here. I'd imagine this would be a strong resistance, MR2. And you've got your average uh, true range, long, 109.80. So technically okay, sentimentally okay. And uh, probably SLC probe, I, I guess, if I was to take a you know a stab at the dark, because we've got that supports and we've got this as a support, we can come up, can't we? I think 109.25, and then uh, potentially even there, and then it will just think, oh, okay, we're done now, taking the stops. It might want to grab that one, maybe. It might just want to get that one as well. There is the, obviously the node here, but there's also a large stop loss cluster above so I think 109.30 and then uh, then that might be job done GU now GU was a weak link if we looked at our USD channel in discord it's got a poor performance on the week so I think if there's going to be a sign of weakness uh, in the dollar crosses it could be the pound one above uh, 123.45 one below is 122.50 with the PMI data and it was actually quite bad it was just, uh, not a good uh, data release, so we really plunged. And uh, MR1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 3. And uh, your SLC is the ATR short, so that looks like a nice confluence to target. If you're looking to short this, a uh, stop loss, um, a TP at 1, 2, 2, 50 seems practical because you've got a stop loss cluster and your ATR target short, so... If you're looking for a sell on this or you're already short because of that data release and you're looking at the news releases, that's going to be a good TP, I think. Um, potentially, we might want to get the one above because it's sticking out like a sore thumb. Get that one first and then down here before the end of the week. So that's a possible scenario. Grab the larger of the two and then we'll come down and get that one. So that's probably what's going to happen. So we're going to zig, zag, zig and then zag. Just to grab uh, liquidity and then liquidity. And so that's going to be really horrible. So I think that probably is going to happen. So keep an eye on this tomorrow. We can see how that unfolded. But I think that's likely, I, I guess, because that would be horrible and cruel. <laughs> uh, AU. And, um, oh, it's to load it. Slow. Wow, look at that. Oh. Uh, well, see, the thing is, they had sold it. 
we had the 50% crossover. And had you used this setup on the 50% crossover, you would have entered it around here. And we knew we had monthly pivot as a support because it's all the way down here. So you remember you're looking for buys when we're above MP. Okay. And we had the we had the fifth percent cross over here. That is a big move. That's a very, very nice move just on that one setup. So above MP tick, fifty percent crossover tick, and then that's it. And then your stop loss would probably be down here, just below one of these lows. You know, you're looking for like maybe a fifteen pip stop. What time did that occur? Yeah, it's midnight, so that's a trouble. Yeah, I would have been asleep and then woken up here. And obviously there's that little naughty move where it would have probably got you out. That could have potentially got you out. Where's your stop loss? Oh, and then maybe it would have been okay because our stops aren't as tight as 10 pips. We try and have like a 20 pip stop. So that might have been okay. Yeah, that could have been a good long here, couldn't it? I would have been awake for that. So this is how you use it anyway. It's very important to know where to put your stop loss and uh, try and get that set up because that was obviously an awesome example because we're above the monthly pivot and we had the 50% crossover. <laughs> right, admittedly it happened at midnight, but when you woke up in the morning, you can catch it as long as you know where your stop loss is. So that's today's Patreon video. I'm looking forward to the weekend. It's been like a long week already and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. So trade safely and have a lovely day.